host for this afternoon's event and I'm the Chief Procurement Officer for Cape Catarama. Now, as you can see, this year's event is looking really, really different to previous years. We normally love to use these events to get you all together, to meet you, have a chat, and to showcase Amateur's fantastic portfolio of products. However, like all major global awards events this year, we've gone virtual. It also means it's a BYO event, so I hope you have your favourite Amateur product close by. <laughs> it's as easy as you've done that. Um, what an eventful year 2020 has been. We've had bushfires, we've had floods, we've had, um, of course, we're experiencing the COVID disruption at this point in time. First and foremost, through all of it, our priority has been the health and well-being of amateur people and also our supplies to be supporters. And I'd just like to take a, a moment to acknowledge those of you dialing in Victoria and especially Melbourne. We appreciate how difficult these restrictions are that you are, are working under at the moment, both personally for yourself, your family and friends, but also for the organisations that you incorporate. We are thinking of you and really appreciate your support during, during this time. At the procurement team at Amatool, our priority is working with you, our supply partners, to service our operations today and tomorrow. And this looks really different for each and every product and service that you supply to us on behalf of Amatool. I'd like to extend our thanks on behalf of the whole team at Amatool for all your support. And we know many of your organisations have had to go to, go to great lengths to, to enable us to, to continue to service our customers and consumers' needs today and tomorrow during these times. And all those efforts are really, really appreciated. Today, we are recognising supplier performance from 2019. And in reviewing all the submissions that we received, it reminded us what a great year we had in 2019. Our results provided our tool with a really strong foundation going into 2020. And whilst this year has not progressed as any of us would have anticipated, your efforts have enabled us to be stronger to meet the challenges of this year and prepare ourselves for next year. Today, this is the opportunity to specifically recognise those of you who excelled in performance in 2019. It also provides Amateur an opportunity um, to share feedback and, and news and insights from our leaders to all of you on how we're navigating 2020 and preparing for 2021. Today, we're joined by um, Amateur's leadership team across Australia. Uh, many of whom are presenting today's awards, and we're also joined by Alison Watkins, our Group Managing Director, and Peter West, the Managing Director of Australian Business, who will share their thoughts on how we can work together to enable us all to grow, return to growth. So we have a lot to get through today. Um, I'd like to start, first of all, by introducing Peter West. So I'll hand over to yourself, Peter. Thank you, Sarah. So uh, 22 weeks ago today, we were preparing for the Melbourne Grand Prix. We're all excited. I'd planned to be there. I was actually flying in from Perth. And then from 22 weeks ago, boom, our life has changed dramatically, hasn't it? Like who would have thought from that moment 22 weeks ago to today? The benefit for Amatel was being part of the Coca-Cola global system. And we were able to tap into lots of knowledge and insights from across the system what was happening in China, what was happening in Europe, uh, and we were able to form a, a, a North Star pretty quickly as to what we thought the likely scenario would be. And at the heart of that was a volume assumption by customer and a volume assumption by channel. Uh, what we had to work very hard at with the learnings from the Coke system were the changes that we made to every factory uh, and every distribution centre to be able to keep physical separation uh, and hygiene and really great compliments for our team in the way that they've been able to manage that. Because of the volume impact, we had to change every shift across every factory. Uh, we had to change the warehouse patterns and we had to change the delivery for every customer that we have. And if you can think of the number of deliveries across our system, what, what that would look like. Uh, we had to redeploy our call center, 180 people within days to working from home that they've continued to. Uh, we moved the our workforce uh, that were in offices across the country to working from home and using this technology. Uh, and we then had to redeploy our considerable sales teams by first, firstly channel, uh, and then by time of day that they called on stores so that we continue to service our customers. 
And then we had to manage our cost agenda being obviously a listed business with financial expectations that go with that. So it's been an incredible 22 weeks. Uh, one, I think the company is incredibly proud of. And I want to take the opportunity to thank that our suppliers in the role that you've played in helping us managing that volatility and what's been required because of the, the changing volumes. From a beverage market, uh, we've seen um, some key observations that I wanted to share with you just over that time period. The first is that we saw unprecedented changes in behaviour of our shoppers, and that's both firstly in the lockdown stage and then more recently in the restricted. In the lockdown stage, across all of our customers, what we saw was less people visiting stores. Uh, when they went, they bought a lot more. Uh, they tended to buy Monday to Friday and less on weekends. There was more to do with lunch than ever before. The notion of an afternoon trade for many of our customers were impacted because they no longer had school kids arriving. And there was quite a difference in the types of packaging or the type pack sizes they were buying. And we started to see the real emergence of e-commerce from, from each of our customers as it really exploded, where many of our customers have actually doubled the number of people who now buy online. As we've moved from that to restricted behaviour, again, we're seeing shopper patterns that we, we wouldn't recognise from history. And we're starting to see things free up. And we're starting to see the change that mobility has. And the, the first look that I look for is the petrol and convenience channel, because as it bounces back, it just starts to show where people are mobile again. And then as people become mobile, how their shopper patterns change. In that time, we've seen change in profile by category as to what people buy. If you picture Saturday in Australia and you picture all the community sports, school sports, and then you take that away for a whole quarter, you can imagine its impact on the water category and on sports. Likewise, energy has remained a powerful category for us. The, the Coke brand continues to power along, especially driven by Coke No Sugar. We've seen quite a change from city, uh, the CBD trading, to the suburbs, to the regions. And I would say it will be a, certainly a permanent impact on the city and, the, and our customers in the city. But whilst it's continued to have less outlets uh, open who are trading less, as you go to the suburbs, we've actually seen volume really return to the suburbs. And in regions, it depends on its proximity to the capital city. It's closer proximity, then again, business is strong relative to tourist areas. Uh, we also see how patterns change by mobility. And if I was Talking about the business, I would say, which state are you talking about? Because we've got a very different business if we're talking about WA, South Australia and Queensland than what we would in New South Wales or the current situation in Victoria. But it shows you in WA the strength of our business and how quickly it can return. We do see changes in home in the way that people entertain, less to do with restaurants or cafes or pubs than what we would have seen. And there will certainly be an ongoing change to in-home consumption. And we've continued to see our customers put a focus on e-commerce. For example, in quick service restaurants, it went from about 9% of sales to 16 to 17%. So pretty dramatic when you think of the number of Australians who are now buying. If you looked at our, our overall volume, you'd take a certain story. But if you looked at by channel, by category, by customer type, then you'll see enormous volatility that goes with that. And clearly that requires your flexibility, it requires your agility, and it requires also your partnership. Uh, so the picture that all of us are in is you can't quite predict what the next six to 12 months look like. And where normally we would be able to do a forecast with a degree of accuracy where it's within a given tolerance, we're certainly scenario planning. And we're looking at the levels where we see double digit increases, we see changes to pack types, to technologies, so again, we encourage uh, your focus on scenario planning just to the extremes of, of what we see and our ability to partner there to, together to, to meet the marketplace. Uh, we remain incredibly buoyant about the beverage category. It's an open-ended consumption category. It's an impulse category. Uh, and it's one that's proven through this time that it really holds up uh, to the future. And for those customers, as, as shoppers return, we see the benefit. Uh, so we look forward to your partnership over the next 12 months. Uh, for me here today, I have the pleasure of announcing the Customer Service Award. This award recognises partners whose account management team has supported Amatel through active resolution of issues 
provision of first-class account management and delivery of opportunities for growth. The nominees for this award consistently go above and beyond and they live and breathe the Amatel values. The finalists for this year's awards are Jibadan for providing consistent service delivery through daily communication to ensure alignment with Amatel production planning across Amatel's portfolio of flavours. Toyota for the excellent support during the transition of the Amatel fleet to Toyota across the eastern seaboard and Telstra for the close collaboration between teams to improve the stability of Amatel's IT environment. It gives me great honour to announce the winner of our Partner of the Year for Customer Service, which is Gibbard Arm. I'd now like to hand over from the team from Gibbard Arm to accept this award. Sarah. Hello, Sarah, Peter, can you hear me? Yes, just checking. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we are we are really, uh, really chuffed to uh, to receive this award. Uh, it's not often um, in your professional life you get the opportunity to get measured against your peers uh, and also to do it in a public forum or semi-public forum. So uh, really uh, chuffed to get this. So thank you. A couple of things I want to say. Firstly, thanks to the, uh, to the COPE team, uh, especially to uh, Rajan, to Jeremy, Jennifer and Ariel and the marketing teams for working with us to build the products that we continue hopefully to delight your customers. Um, our customer care team, as you mentioned, Peter, uh, led by Charlie, works hand in hand with Ariel and with Jennifer uh, prior to Ariel to ensure that the orders are, are supplied and aligned to the CCH schedule. We don't always align, but um, when we do, we work together and it's a partnership to keep things uh, cracking along. Uh, we've had many projects that we've partnered on with CCA over the last 12 months, both in redeveloping existing products, but also moving towards new segments, giving us both the opportunity to stretch our brands uh, into few future growth areas. Um, it's been a focus for us, uh, and when we get it right, it's, uh, it's uh, growth for both companies, which is fantastic. Um, there have been instances where Jibidon hasn't always aligned with CCA. Um, and in those times, uh, I think we've both shown respect to work through the issues, which is fantastic. Again, uh, talks to the maturity of the uh, relationship. Um, and there's been a lot of um, companies that, uh, sorry, finally, I'd like to call out and thank Jane, Thomas uh, and Kirsten uh, for all their work over the last 12 months, um, you know, working hand in hand with the, uh, the Coke team to develop new business. Uh, it's been a pleasure learning from them and, and also working with them. But you know, thanks to the wider CCA crew, the marketing team for their ongoing support. Um, we, look, we look forward to more collaborative and partnerships working forward uh, to continue the growth. So uh, yeah, thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, thanks, Dan, uh, and congratulations, Jim. And even though today's event is virtual, you'll be pleased to hear that the awards are not. So we do have proper awards um, and we will be sending them through to you um as we as we uh, after the event today so so thank you so yeah congratulations Gibbon, and and thank you peter i'd also like to just take a moment to thank uh, our members of our cross-functional evaluation team so how we actually identify the winners is once your nominations come in we, we have a cross-functional team that you know have a lot of robust discussion and and come up and, and work out who the right the winners are so I really appreciate the effort and the time these uh, these team members put into the activity because it's you know, it's really important and it gives us the outcomes that we've got today. So next um, up, I'd like to introduce Orlando Rodriguez, who is oh, Orlando is not on. So um, it looks as though, in the spirit of virtual and keeping things up and running, I will be able to uh, present the award for. Um, Supply continuity myself, because that's what we do. Uh, I, I did sort of look at the, you know, when I looked at feedback over the weekend, the BAFTAs went virtual, and the feedback on that had been, you know, it's more enjoyable than the normal one because it's brilliant host, short speeches, and done in 90 minutes. So being the brilliant host, I'll step in on behalf of Orlando and present the, present the award. So um, uh, supply continuity recognises those partners that have been effective in supplying products or services on time and in full without distribution to our without distribution that disruption to our planned operations. 
All of Amatol's operations depend on a reliable supply to enable us to deliver and meet the commitments that we've made to our customers. Today's finalists for the award are Rolig, who've been an integral partner in managing Amatol supply chain and who have achieved a day pot of 98% during 2019. We've also got label makers who achieved a day pot of 99% Plus greater than 700 label SKUs in 2019 and operate a print to podcast model to deliver this. And thirdly, we've got Aurora, who delivered over 1.6 billion cans and ends to Amazon in Australia with an almost perfect dive score. And it gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of the new Partner of the Year Award for Supply Continuity is Aurora. I think I'd like to pass over to AJ to to accept this award. Are you there, AJ? Uh, I am, Sarah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? Thank you. Yes, yeah. all good. Thank you very much. Um, firstly, thanks to the Amatel team in the event. Having a better way to do environment. Um, the portal is working really well, and it's a great way to get you from the Amatel team. So. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, we are honoured to to win this award. It's a it's a great acknowledgement of our partnership, really, and how well we work together. Um, and I value Aurora is within the Amatel team, which is something we really pride ourselves on. I would particularly like to acknowledge both of our um, supply chain teams and our operation teams. Uh, I think we'll all agree the amount of tireless work that they are doing at the moment to help us safely deliver on our promises in the trade and to consumers in such a challenging environment. Um, both teams' response has been first class, and we're really delighted by the way we've done this together. So a big thank you to both supply chain and operation teams at Amatel and Aurora. Um, I guess this award couldn't have had a better time. I think working in ways that we've never worked before and dealing with both personally and at work that we could never have, have envisaged. Um, I know our team will be really stoked, Sarah, to hear, hear about this award, and, and I'm really grateful to receive this on their behalf. Uh, finally, um, you, I guess you hear the word partnership used a lot, particularly, I guess, in the world of sport with no real substance behind it. Um, I think what we have together is more than words. It's actions and it's led by committed people from both parties, something we should both be really proud of. I think a great example of that was uh, how quickly we came together earlier in the year to bring to life and donate the share of Coke cans with a fiery. Uh, I mean, what a great way to acknowledge and thank the heroes in our community together. I look forward to growing on what we've developed together and continuing it long into the future. I know it's a bit early for a can of feral to celebrate, so this will have to do. But thank you and all the best. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Well done, well done to Aurora. And, and I believe we've also, uh, Orlando, you have managed to to join us um, and online. Hi, Sarah. I am here. Apologies for that. All sorts of technical challenges there. Congratulations to the winners and thank you, everybody for your support. It's been an incredible time and we really appreciate all the support we've had. And uh, Alanda, just, just whilst I've got you, you know, this year, especially from a distribution perspective, your team have, uh, have had to deal with so much. We were at the forefront of Amatol's um, response on the bushfires. Now, what were your learnings um, through this process? Uh, going through what we're going through now, Sarah, it feels like an absolute lifetime ago <laughs> to reflect back on that, but it was only a few months ago. What a year we've had. Um, I think it was a testament to the human spirit um, going through those times. I was in a position where I went through a lot of the ravaged areas and saw firsthand what some of our sales team, our technicians in the field, what our logistics partners were doing with our customers and the community in general. And it really gives you hope that as a group of humans that we can band together and achieve something absolutely extraordinary through those times, um, supporting each other, keeping everybody safe. And I hope in a small way, Amitol played a part with the donations we provided and the general 
community support. It was certainly humbling to play a small part during that time. Awesome. Thanks, thanks, Orlando, and thanks for, for joining us today. The next award uh, we will be presenting is the Award for Quality. And um, who better to do that than Avatar's Director of Operations, uh, Martin Azinti. So, Martin, I, I will hand over to, to yourself. Thanks, Sarah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, loud and clear. Perfect. Look, I'm, I'm very proud uh, to hand over the um, award for quality. Um, it's a recognition for our partners who consistently uh, meet our specification and quality uh, KPIs. Um, and as part of our zero compromise, um, we know that producing and delivering uh, our products to the highest quality standards um, is key for our partners and for our customers. And I'll state uh, something obvious. Um, we couldn't do the end-to-end -end flow um, and delivering and producing quality. We couldn't do it without you guys. Um, and that's, um, I think when we talk about partnership and quality, um, you see it the most, especially um, when we have challenges, then you see how good the partnership is. So thank you very much. Um, I got as well um, three finalists um, in no particular order. OI, who delivered 52 million glass bottles to Amatil in 2019 with almost zero quality issues. Number two, um, Sugar Australia, who consistently measure performance against all agreed quality index and had zero quality issues in 2019. And last but not least, uh, Graphic Packaging, who delivered over 140 million uh, units to Amatil in 2019 with almost no quality issues and consistently demonstrated uh, performance improving behaviors. And I'm not sure how you are, um, the winner, of the partner of the year or partner for growth in quality is, I'm not sure, I hear some uh, some drums uh, uh, in my head, I'm not sure it's me or, or the situation. The winner is uh, graphic packaging. And I, I hand over now to graphic packaging to accept this award, please. Hi, it's uh, Sid Friani here, can you hear me? Yep. Great, okay. Um, Look, thank you on behalf of Graphic Packaging. We're certainly uh, humbled um, and extremely grateful for the acknowledgement. Um, I certainly want to take a moment just to uh, acknowledge the significant contribution from um, uh, a colleague who, of ours who recently passed, David Johnson, who was a long-standing um, GPI employee and had a long-standing relationship with Coca-Cola, who certainly made a significant contribution to not only uh, GPI, but I think to Coca-Cola. And um, we would like to dedicate this award to David um, on behalf of the GPI and I dare say the Coca-Cola Amatil team um, for his uh, leadership and guidance in uh, getting to where we are today. So, with that, like most of these awards, uh, you hear, as we've heard today, there's a lot of um, acknowledgement around partnerships and we'd like to think we're no different. I think there's a close alignment in the two organisations in relation to focusing on continuous improvement. And I think we've done some special things with cross-functional teams throughout the last 12 to 18 months that certainly um, taken us to the next level and we've learned a lot and are looking forward to continuing to learn a lot. Um, quite a number of projects that we have worked on um, over the journey and uh, they've ranged from everything from efficiency improvement opportunities to uh, troubleshooting uh, issues in the marketplace and I think that can-do attitude and that willingness to work cross-functionally has certainly stood both organisations in good stead. Um, and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all the teams that were involved, particularly on the GPI side, uh, Andrew, Renee, uh, and the broader GPI team, and from CCA, uh, Heather, Ben, NPC and planning teams, as well as all of those out at the site who have certainly been instrumental in helping us uh, keep our rejects very low in um, taking this quality award. So we are certainly looking forward to uh, building on this in the years to come and supporting PCA's growth. Thank you. 
Thanks, Sid, and uh, you know, lovely recognition of David's contribution and our thoughts are obviously with you and the, the GPI team, the GPIA team, but um, you know, congratulations on a well-deserved award for quality. At Amatol, we are always seeking ways to deliver competitive advantage, and now more than ever, uh, that is important to, to our future performance. As someone who knows a lot about competitive advantage and, and customers who, who strive for that is um, presenting our next award, uh, and I'd like to introduce Don Biazzi, our Director of Sales and, and National Customers. Hi, Don. Hi, Sarah. Thank you, uh, and thank you to all our supply partners. I'm pleased to present the Award for Competitive Advantage. Now, the Award for Competitive Advantage recognises partners who have enabled Amatel to be more unique, faster, or more competitive in today's marketplace. Now, the finalists for this award are, we're we gonna get a little screenshot. If not, I'll jump ahead. Here we go, well done, Lauren. Uh, the finalists are Cornelius, now, Cornelius's next generation shop management design uh, enabled Amatil um, to have a better solution with improved branding and functionality. We've got ColorCorp, who designed a unique QR code enabling specific themed activations, which have been critical in securing new placements with key customers. And finally, Microsoft for using AI and ML services to analyze Amatil data uh, and enable faster decision making with greater accuracy. So congratulations to all three nominees and the winner of the Partner of the Year Award for Competitive Advantage is Calicorp. Congratulations. I'll pass over to the team from Calicorp to accept the award. Hey, I think everyone can hear me. It's uh, uh, Jason here from Calicorp. Um, I look a little bit starstruck here as well, but also very humbled. Um, thank you so much, Dom, for uh, um, uh, yeah, calling that out. It's, look, it's it's amazing to be a part of it. Um, we uh, we generally try to to definitely do our part. We're very invested uh, in all aspects of CCA. I personally, I, you know, you, sometimes you can't shut me up, and now I seem to be lost for words. Uh, I, I generally love love a good ramble, but it's good to be able to get together, with you guys. And as as a company, uh, you know, Color Corp will remain invested for years to come. We've we've, we've been uh, working so closely with you guys across the channels and try to. Uh, anything that an idea or anything that pops into our heads that we can uh, somehow contribute or add value to, to your customers, you know, with you being ours, um, we generally feel we're part of the same team. So uh, look, thank you so much to everyone for it. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna shut up before I keep rambling. So <laughs> thanks again. <laughs> oh, um, congratulations to the Telecart team and, and congratulations, Jason. Great, great acceptance speech. Um, yeah, we, we really appreciate the, the support that you give to, to our EQS team. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Jared Mortimer, who is Amatool's Director of Sales on the Go, to present our award for innovation and growth. And Jared, um, you have been, you know, you've had first-hand experience of the impact COVID has had on our on-the-go customers. Yep. Um, how are they responding? And, and you know, what are your, you know, what are your insights that you can share with us? Yeah, thanks, Sarah, and um, good afternoon. I, can, I assume you can hear me all okay. Yep, we are loud and clear. Jason, just sending you a virtual hug, mate. That was a uh, that was a great speech as well. So, um, <laughs> there's certainly from a, look from an on the go perspective, it's it's certainly been a challenging year. We heard we heard Orlando talk before, um, you know, about the impact of bushfires at the start, and and over two thousand of our regional customers were you know indirectly affected by the bushfires. And then obviously through COVID nineteen, where the, the world has completely changed, and and what I look after from an on the go perspective is pretty much anything outside of your supermarkets and your petrol convenience outlets. So they've been heavily impacted by by COVID nineteen restrictions, um, and obviously, you know, as it sits today, um, right across the country, it's a, it's a really different piece on how it's playing out. Where we look at Western Australia, they're almost you know the envy of the nation in regards to where they're at. Where we look at Victoria, they're obviously in you know, severe stage four restrictions. So the, the the way the majority of customers have gone through it is really about survival mode and, and then, you know, changing the shape of their business based on how the customers start to behave and how they start to purchase aggregators online, you know, Uber Eats, et cetera, is certainly a way that a lot of customers are starting to make contact with their consumers like never before. Um, and, you know, we adjust and, and pivot with our customers accordingly, but it's certainly been a challenging year for the, uh, the on-the-go customer base um, across Australia. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Jared. And I'd like to present the award. Okay, no worries. Well, um, thank you all. So once again, you know, for every supplier, we, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your support and partnership 
um, with Amatool. And, and, and from my perspective, it's, it's an honour to present the award for innovation and growth today. So the award for innovation and growth recognises partners who have been successful in identifying and implementing innovative solutions that have demonstratedly grown the Coca-Cola Amatool business. Nominees for this award have a great understanding of our business, our values and our needs. They continuously challenge our thinking and they take initiative and own the outcome. The finalists for this award are Scope, who in 2019 successfully updated Amatool's core caller fleet to be more environmentally friendly and technologically connected. In addition, the digital OD header um, has enabled dynamic media content on our Amatool callers. The second nomination, Gold Star, who provide an innovative learning platform delivering real-time benefit to Amatool drivers via smartphones and tablets. And the third nominee is PrezFast. Two examples of innovation, notably the campaign management portal and the Make It Your Spectacular, which increased beverage visibility, drove purchase intent and an increase in sales. Now, because we're going virtual, I'm just having a little, I'm having a little crack here. So hopefully this will work. I've, uh, I've downloaded drum rolling on my phone and because we're going, we're going virtual, it's not working. So I'll just hand straight over. Here it is. Beautiful. And the winner is PrezFast. Congratulations. And I'll now hand over to the press pass team to accept your award. Sorry, Kev. Wow. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> it's, this, <laughs> this is good fun. Uh, I'm uh, Gavin Bloor here with uh, Dante, main man, Howdy. and uh, very, very proud to uh, receive the award. It's been a hell of a time for us all. And um, what's really special uh, for us, I believe, is that uh, this award recognises in some ways, what we're all about here at PressFast, and that is we're always thinking to find a better way. And uh, that encompasses everything that we do, uh, whether or not it's been internally talking with our teams or externally talking with our teams, how we make things, how we go about it. It's There's always a better way. And i um, uh, so proud to uh, receive this award and very, very proud of my GM, Dante, who you get to see just about every day in there, the office. <laughs> you might want to say something, Dante. Yeah, look, guys, it's a, a privilege. We've been with Amateur for oh, seven or eight years now. And the partnership does truly just get better and better with age, just like a, a nice red. But uh, particularly want to call out um, the marketing team, uh, Joanne Quinn, uh, Rach Simmons, Ryan Lynch, um, Margot. You've all been amazing, tremendous supporters of ours, and uh, we really do enjoy working with you and your teams each and every day. Thank you so much for the honour. Uh, congratulations uh, to the PressFast team, guys. Well, well done, and thank you, Jared, for presenting that award. It's great to see yourself and and Dom on the line, and introduce to our suppliers because you know, often you know we're at one end of the supply chain and you guys are at the other, but you, you know, you're the ones that really see the benefit of what our whole supply partners can deliver to to help us support our customers. So, so thank you. Um, moving on to our next award for corporate social responsibility. Um, I mentioned earlier that the health and safety of our people has been our top priority, and I'd like to introduce you know, Sarah Byrne, our Director for People and Culture for the Australian Business, who's, who's been at the, the forefront of that. Uh, welcome this afternoon, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, um, and good afternoon, everyone. It gives me great pleasure this afternoon to announce uh, the, the award for corporate social responsibility. And, and this award recognises those suppliers who have collaborated with Amatool to drive a positive and lasting impact in any of our four focus areas, which are business ethics, human and workplace rights, the environment, as well as provide benefits to our overall communities. Uh, the finalists for this award are Vizi, who continue to demonstrate their commitment to the environment and its communities with a notable project to increase Amatul's corrugated board recycled content to 84%, which is an industry high. Verdia, through partnering with Amatul to design and install 10,000 solar panels over two hectares of roof space across three bottling plants. Amatul, as a result of this, will save more than 4,000 tonnes of carbon emissions annually. And the last uh, nominee is Label Makers, uh, and label makers' conversion of monoweb from a laminated material has reduced the volume of material used to produce the label by 120 tonnes. Uh, so without further ado, it's um, my absolute pleasure to announce the winner of the Partner of the Year Award for Corporate Social Responsibility is Verdia. Congratulations, Verdia. I'll um, hand over to Verdia now to accept the award.
Hello, and, and thank you very much. And uh, I, I, we appreciate the award. And first of all, I want to thank Emma Tell for, for the award. We're extremely proud to be working with you. Um, the opportunity to develop and deliver one of the largest rooftop solar programs and projects across in Australia, um, three and a half megawatts, 10,000 panels, um, has been a fantastic sort of collaboration and partnership. Um, thanks to your team, Ben, uh, Oxley, Michael Haynes, the property team, and all of the site teams that we've interacted with. It's been great to work with you. And more broadly, congratulations to Amatel on providing leadership in sustainability to corporate Australia. If there was ever a time uh, that leadership was required to make the world a better place in, in each of those areas, it's now. Um, you know, when our teenagers feel like they have to march on the street, you know, going back a few months and say, hey, let's think longer term about making the world better. Um, when we get a corporate like Coke and Amatel who says, we're with you, we think longer term and we're, um, you know, that we, we appreciate the fact that we can partner with you. Um, you know, we were reminded and, and again, uh, you know, we have to, we don't know how long we have. The director, our project director who actually delivered this program um, passed away in an accident, a cycling accident two weeks ago. He's well known to the Koch family. He's loved in our um, in our in our company, um, but he wanted to leave a legacy. And through this project, that legacy will live. Through his family, will live. And and it it matters that we take the opportunities we have to make a difference. You have, we have, together we have, and we thank you for it. Um, and we look forward to continuing the partnership together. Thank you, Cope, and I would tell. Thank you, Paul. Um, you know, I started with you and the team at Verdure at this difficult time. Uh, but, you know, thank you. As you said, it's, sustainability is such an important part of amateur strategy. And what your team have helped us deliver over 2019 has, has really helped to contribute to, to amateur strategy. And it does leave a lasting legacy. So it's a thank you very much. Um, moving on to our next award, um, the past two years we have presented uh, a Rookie of the Year Award and this uh, recognises those partners that are relatively new to supplying Amateur. And in keeping with uh, Amateur tradition, we always ask um, the newest member of uh, our leadership team to present the Rookie of the Year Award. So this year it is Greg Barnes who is, who's joined Amateur as our Chief Procurement Officer. So Greg, you're I think you're about what, nine weeks into the role now. Yeah, what are your what are your initial thoughts on on Amatol? Yeah, look, I have to say uh, I'm loving it. If you'd have said to me, Sarah, six months ago, that I'd be starting a role in an office ten minutes from where I live, and I'd be interviewing on Webex and starting my first week from home, and you know, two months in, still not met most of my team face to face. I've probably had some reservations, <laughs> but uh, it's just been an extraordinary period, and such are the times. Um, you know, here we are, and it's frankly these sort of circumstances are pretty commonplace now and uh, pretty trivial in the scheme of what a lot of people are dealing with. So, um, you know, it's a it's a crazy time. But uh, look, from my perspective, with all that, it's been an extremely seamless process. My observations of Amatil are extremely positive, um, you know, to come in uh, to the culture and I guess the warmth of the people um, and, you know, the openness of the people to just really get on and get things done is what I've been most struck by. And, and, and I'm also, um, you know, really impressed by the way both this company and clearly with its customers and listening today with its partners, um, you know, how they're working together and collaborating and frankly adapting to the environment that we're in. I was just listening to Adam Johnson talk about partnerships and those words that um, get thrown around uh, from time to time and not so often lived out. I would uh, make a similar observation about Amatil and values and culture and, and the company actually walks the talk and do, does what it uh, says it values and lives those values out. So, you know, from my perspective, I feel very proud to join the company and I'm, I'm even wear, wearing the T-shirt uh, in, in a conservative navy blue as the finance guy I am, but I have the T-shirt on, Sarah. Oh, it's, great so, to, uh, it's great to have you on board, Greg. Uh, <laughs> and uh, like, um, I'll hand it over to you to, to um, present the Rookie of the Year Award. Yeah, well, look, funny enough, the award I got the privilege of uh, announcing 
um, has uh, the amateur values at the at the centre of it. So the, the Rookie of the Year Award recognises partners who have been supplying amateur for the last two years. And during that time, they've provided outstanding customer service and quality, ongoing continuity of supply, uh, no mean feat in, in these times, I'm sure, and demonstrate the amateur values in a way that, uh, in the way that they work with us. So the finalists for this award are MCC for their fantastic support to our ABCO team. MCC has provided uh, print consistency, machine efficiency, and introduced an online approval tool. Uh, the second nominee is uh, Robobuy for an AI tool providing a consolidated view of company-wide spend with additional insights through automated sustainability reporting. And the third nominee is Culture Amp, who have enabled Amatil to innovate the way it collects employee feedback providing live insights during surveys and identification of opportunities to drive transformational change or transformative change. And the winner is, and I don't have the drum roll, but I'll, uh, let's all pretend there is one. The winner is a Culture Amp. So congratulations, Culture Amp, and I'll hand over to you guys to, 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 to accept the award. Yes, can you hear and see me? There we are. We can hear you, Holly. Fantastic. Can you see me as well? I cannot. Oh, yes, I can now. There you are. Amazing. Thank you, Greg. So from one rookie to another. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody. Uh, so much to the entire Amatol business for this award. It, it really does mean an awful lot to Culture Amp, so we do appreciate it. And I also wanted to say um, congratulations that you've done an awesome job on bringing this event online this year as well, especially given the uh, the climate that we're in. Um, so on behalf of the whole team at Culture Amp, I wanted to say a special thank you to a few people. Um, they are Michelle Phipps, Jack Peters, Emily Garrett, and Navia Chandran. They're really the superstars that bring Cool Tramp and employee feedback to life within Amatil. I also want to say thank you to the wider people and culture teams as well. So all of those people looking after your HR systems and all those people across the regions as well that we've been working with more closely more recently. So Cool Tramp, we've been helping Amatil uh, with their employee feedback strategy and putting culture first. And a huge part of what Cool Tramp brings is our community of people geeks. Um, a people geek is somebody who loves um, using data and analytics to make better people decisions. And similar to you, Greg, um, would you believe I'm actually representing the community today with my People Geek t-shirts, also in a bit of a, a navy blue. So <laughs> good uh, well alignment done. with that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we do have a small group from Coltramp on the call today, but it really is a full team that support Amatil, um, and they always go above and beyond for, for the team at your end. We really do love working with Amatil, and it's truly one of our favourite partnerships. The whole team that we work with are just a pleasure. So they're always um, bringing curiosity, enthusiasm and innovation to everything that we work on together. We've also loved amplifying you as a brand. So Jack has spoken at a lot of events in the last kind of 18 months, and she's become a bit of a crowd favourite, to be completely honest. Um, and she's also leading a what we call a North Sydney chapter as part of the community as well. So I'll keep it short and wrap up by saying Amatil are the epitome uh, of people geeks and really a fantastic partner. Jack also has her very own People Geek emoji now in all of our internal systems. So that just really goes to show the level of people geekiness that they have. Um, thank you again, everybody. And we're really looking forward to another year of working together. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. And, and then congratulations to the, the team of Cultura. I think, you know, I'm reflecting a great, it's a great example. You know, we've talked a lot over the last hour or so about you know, flexibility and agility and, and you know, being able to use your tool to adapt very quickly to go out and ask our employees around how they are feeling with all the change and the disruption which is a great example of you know suppliers working with us to to meet our our you know customer and internal needs so so thank you to the team at culture um i'd now like to introduce alison Watkins, as our group managing director to share her thoughts with us on on 2020 and and, and looking ahead and um, so this is probably the only time I'll be able to introduce you as our socially isolated group managing director. So um, I'll hand it, hand it over to yourself. 
Thanks. Thanks very much, Sarah. And good afternoon, everyone. It's fantastic to be here with you all and um, part of the um, Partner for Growth Awards. And we're really pleased that we've been able to make it happen and acknowledge our suppliers, um, albeit um, virtually. And yes, in, in my case, um, in isolation, I've just traveled up from Victoria and I'm required to spend 14 days in self-isolation, which is pretty incredible, really. Um, I think uh, Gavin from Pressfast put it pretty well. Um, at Amateur, we like to be straightforward and open. And I thought when he said, it's been a hell of a year, um, that was uh, about as straightforward and open and an accurate a description as you could give. Um, it's certainly been a 2020 like nothing we could have ever imagined, um, starting off with the bushfires, of course, um, we, with now with COVID and the enormous challenges that we've had to respond to. Um, I do um, also, you know, want to add my condolences to the team at Verdia um, for the, the tragic loss of James. Um, very, very sad news and our thoughts are very much with you all at this time and we're very grateful um, to him for his leadership and the legacy that he leads. Um, my, my thoughts as a Victorian are certainly uh, also with everyone in Victoria and I think um, you know, Jared gave you a sense of, of how it is for our customers, um, many of whom he is responsible for. And of course, when we think about Melbourne, we think about we think about food, we think about wine, we think about arts, we think about um, entertainment, cool bars, we think about the mighty Richmond Tigers, in my case, and all of these things that are so much. Um, the personality of Melbourne are, are under attack um, from the health crisis and the tough measures that the government has had to take there. And I think, you know, our thoughts are with everybody in Victoria and uh, we hope that we can get through this and, and continue um, the slow path to recovery. I think one of the things um, that's really come to the fore through all of this, and I'm sure is very much on all of our minds as integral parts of the um, the food and beverage manufacturing or the food and beverage supply chain is the role of supply chains and through this pandemic I think we've seen a lot of reflection happening and I, I'm sure we will see a lot of change to come as we've understood just how integrated we are and the reliance that we have on each other and the importance of having uh, continuity of supply. Um, this has, of course, all been exacerbated by some of the strategic alliances and the tensions we're seeing, for example, between the US and China and um, the ability for capacity to be curtailed and industries shut down because of the health crisis that's going on. So I think um, the recognition of the importance of, of, of stable, efficient, um, resilient uh, supply chains with, with adequate capacity and local capability has never been more important. And I think, you know, we've needed at, at Amateur to work very closely with all of you. And we really, I think, are so fortunate um, that we've been able to manage our business with relatively um, little disruption to our customers. We've been able to adjust and respond. Um, we've only been able to do that because of all of you. And I think you've done some truly extraordinary things. Um, we've certainly put you to the test and um, you've absolutely delivered and, and um, we are truly grateful to you from that. So as we, as we look forward, um, I think um, today, even though in some ways, um, as we reflected earlier, 2019 seems like ancient history, um, it is really important that we acknowledge the contributions that you made to us in 2019, because 2019, 2019 was actually a really important year for us at Amateur, and particularly Amateur Australia. And it has provided a really strong foundation for us 
to navigate these challenges and also it provides the foundation that gives us the confidence that we will get through this turbulent time stronger and better than ever and we will have um you know we will have an exciting future because of all of that hard work that we did I might just sort of step back and reflect on some of the work briefly um, that I've been doing through my role as a board member of the Business Council of Australia. And I know a number of your companies are involved in that. Um, I'm chair of the BCA's Economic Policy and Competitiveness Committee. And we've been working very intensely um, with our member companies and with government um, and the community, really trying to put forward a blueprint and and give um, the government practical ideas on how we can really recover, um, limit the damage, and also take the opportunity for longer term reform. And look, there's no doubt it's an enormous challenge um, that that we're that we're facing. It's it's bigger than anything as a nation we've had to confront since the Second World War. Right now, I think we've got about one and a half million people receiving JobSeeker and um, expectations are that that could go to two million people once JobKeeper phases out. So that's jobs, two million jobs out of about 13 million workforce that we have in Australia that have been lost. And the task of creating 2 million jobs is an enormous one. Um, it took us 10 years to create 2 million jobs last time round. So I think it's very clear that we're going to need a, a period of sustained economic growth, the likes of which you know, we've, we've not seen um, to recreate the demand that will employ those workers. And I think none of that is going to be achieved with a business as usual strategy. And we're also going to be have to, having to try to achieve it um, against a backdrop of subdued global demand, because of course um, this pandemic is affecting every single nation. And so all of our major trading partners are trying to revive their own economies at the same time. I think one of the clear priorities, and I'm sure you're all very mindful of this um, through what many of you will be dealing with, like we're dealing with in the Victorian situation, is that we need national uh, rather than state, and we need consistent protocols that provide greater certainty about the rules for businesses and individuals in the event of outbreaks. Um, the virus is likely to be with us for some time and we can't even get started on a recovery with a stop start approach it, you know as a business we we can't invest in this environment and you can't you know as as <laughs> as as i've experienced even just this week you can't plan around work um, in the midst of travel leisure in the midst of a stop start recovery and I think, you know, we're seeing Victoria, um, which necessarily is taking some very strong measures here, um, but at the same time creating a lot of confusion because the rules that they put in place um, are unclear as far as how those will apply and particularly as they relate to supply chains, uh, distribution centres, and the flow through that that has to um, particularly uh, um, to food suppliers is likely if um, these are not resolved quickly to um, produce even more panic buying and and um, have many flow on effects well beyond Victoria into our national supply chains. So that that task of 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 a national consistent set of protocols, um, I think, is an incredibly important one. Um, it's clear also that we need to really focus on, um, on, on stimulating investment, investment before this crisis. Um, in fact, you know, uh, private sector investment in Australia over the last 10 years has been very, very weak. And ultimately it's investment that will create demand and jobs. And so 
that is a very big theme um, around the um, the ideas and particularly the reform agenda that we're putting forward to the government. At the end of the day, business has to do the heavy lifting on this, and um, we need a different kind of cooperation between government, unions, the community, and together as a partnership um, is the way that we will achieve the level of reform that we do. Um, but certainly, we've got four phases of, of a pretty important set of of change to work through. Um, managing the health crisis has got to be the first one and getting the economy back open in an orderly way. Then it's about releasing economic activity to support jobs. Um, and that is about private investment projects at the end of the day. Government projects can play a role in the interim, but we've got to get private investment going again. We've got to get cash or keep cash in people's pockets um, to support demand and the transition arrangements around JobKeeper are incredibly important here and elevating the job seeker payments and making sure that we um, bring forward other opportunities such as personal income taxes, I think also will be an important part of the mix. And then we really do have to step up to structural reform um, if we're going to have long run sustainable growth. So all of those things um, are very daunting, I think, um, sitting where we do today. Um, but look, I, I, I would want to sort of finish up on a positive note, which is to say that um, I do think the business community is working with government and other stakeholders um, in an extremely collaborative way in the interests of the country. And I do think we have a wonderful starting point as a country. Um, we do have a, a strong balance sheet. Um, we have strong institutions and a cohesive society and, and a good health system. And yes, there's some ups and downs, but I think we'll come through this. And if we play to our strengths as a country and, and our competitive advantages, and definitely one of those is food and beverage um, in, in all of its facets. And if we can promote and lead as organisations and continue to invest in our industry um, and the ecosystem that supports it, I think we will come through this better and stronger than ever as an industry and certainly um, for us as, as Amatul, that's a really exciting prospect. So we'll continue to work closely with you and, um, you know, our number one focus, of course, with all of you is to make sure that we're keeping our people safe um, and getting through this. And, you know, we really do, um, you know, we're so delighted to have the opportunity just to acknowledge all of you, um, to say thank you, and, um, you know, to truly admire your, your commitment, your expertise, and your passion, and it really makes a difference to us. Um, we sincerely are grateful for that. Okay, time to get down to the final business, um, which is our overall Partner of the Year Award. Um, the winner of this award, of course, has displayed excellence throughout all aspects of their relationship with us. They deliver on the fundamentals of a supply relationship. And importantly, they demonstrate an outstanding continued partnership approach. They live and breathe our values and they have a shared commitment to continuous improvement and innovation. And so I'm delighted to announce that the winner of the overall Partner of the Year Award is Graphic Packaging. Let me hand over to Graphic Packaging to accept their award. Wow, thank you, Alison. I have to say this is a major surprise. I'm, I'm a little shell-shocked, um, but nonetheless, uh, extremely pleased and delighted. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to um, thank the FBI team for their hard work and dedication. 
as well as the team at CCA um, for their fantastic support uh, over the last 12 months. I think you mentioned a couple of things that resonated, and in particular, uh, alignment in values. I think uh, our two organisations certainly do have a very strong alignment in values. Some of the things I've observed over the year um, is a willingness through the challenges, and in particular, with a strong focus on CI, and I think the cross-functional teams have worked, as I mentioned earlier, very, very well together in trying to um, overcome those hurdles. Um, also, differences of opinion are often a sore point between organisations, and I think um, that open and honest feedback and communication has certainly helped us uh, overcome quite a number of challenges. and. Um, that's often difficult between customer and supplier, and I think um, that maturity in the relationship uh, certainly allowed us to um, have some very good conversations and move beyond some obstacles. So uh, I certainly see that as a strong values alignment, together with that can-do attitude. And you did mention some of the heavy lifting, and I think both parties have had a willingness to do the heavy lifting um, sometimes equally and uh, sometimes others have taken the lead, whether it's ourselves or CCA, but I think there's been support on both parts. So from that perspective, I'd have to say, um, yeah, very, very much uh, a partnership in the true sense of the word. So you know, from my perspective, um, I'm extremely honoured and, as I mentioned earlier, humble, but we've been recognised and we're certainly proud um, to be a valued partner of CCA. And I'd just like to thank everyone um, who uh, are present here today uh, for their contributions and certainly want to make sure that everyone stays safe because we are in fact uh, in this all together. So on behalf of GBI, thank you very much. All right, thank you, um, Stephen, and congratulations to yourself and the GPIA team. We've got your award here that we'll send through, and, and look, again, it's a wonderful legacy for, for David as well. So, um, you know, you would want to, to recognise him also. Um, so the, this brings today's event uh, to, you know, close to the end. Uh, I'd really like to thank all our presenters who joined today. Um, yeah, I really appreciate. We really appreciate your, your contribution to to the to the afternoon. Um, I'd also like to take an opportunity to you know acknowledge the uh, thank my team for for their support in not just pulling this team you know, this event together, but also the work that they've done both in 2019 to to deliver some great results, and also you know the the agility and flexibility that they um, they've shown over the past six months. As Alison you know, mentioned, you know, we, we're managing through complex and uncertain times, and you know, they've really uh, done, done a great effort in doing that. Um, particular call out for, for Georgia and Heather um, the Williams, previously known as Bush, um, who, you know, when I said to them six months, six weeks ago, like, you know, how do you, I mean, is it possible? You know, what's possible when it comes to holding a, a partner for growth event you know, virtually? Took the idea and absolutely ran with it, and and yeah, you know, I think uh, yeah, you know, really, really, really grateful for the the effort to both put in. So thank you. The cross functional team I mentioned to you earlier, without your you know your, your contribution, you know, we wouldn't have such a you know, a, a great and worthy list of um, you know, runners up and and winners. And also, don't want to forget to mention. Lauren from our PAX team and Daniel here, who's been keeping us on track uh, over the course of the, the afternoon. So, so thank you very much. Um, to our suppliers, you know, we really appreciate, hopefully it's a common theme you've picked up through the course of the afternoon, your support in um, you know, the agility that you've shown to help us support our, our customers and consumers over the course of the year. And we really do hope that this time next year, we're absolutely be able to come together again and we can showcase some of Amatol's products and, um, you know, it's no longer BYO, we'll be able to, to, to give you some to, to taste and take away. Today's winners will receive their trophies in the coming weeks. And we, as we had done in previous years, being virtual doesn't stop us from putting together, you know, and amplifying your win through our media channels and we absolutely will do so. 
So without further ado, I'll close this afternoon's um, awards event and just close it out with a, you know, taking the opportunity to recognise the contribution of all of you during 2019. Thank you for your continued support in 2020. Um, as Alison said, and many of you have called out, you know, this is a journey we're all on together and look forward to your continued support through the course of the year and into 2021. So thank you, everyone. <laughs>